Hi. I still read a lot. I hope you can see this. Today I just finished this book called Dolores Park by Michael Lyons, who's an American writer uh, based in San Francisco. His French is pretty good, actually. I've exchanged quite a few emails with him. Now, this book took me a long time to read. Um, that was kind of due to my circumstances over the past six or seven or eight months or something. I did finally finish it today, and I think this book needs some editing. It's an independent published book, but it's it's good. Um, what you might not like about it is that there is a lot of explicit sex in this book. And it's kind of an autobiographical book, I think, about the author who lived in a sex commune in San Francisco in the early 80s before the AIDS thing was known and herpes was the big scare. And if you like Buddhism and if you've studied Buddhism and know something about it or would like sort of an icebreaker with a lot of sex, um, you might like this. It wasn't bad. Uh, it took me an awfully long time to read. That usually doesn't happen, but this was my commuting book. And um, I've had to commute a lot less in the past six or seven months. Now, this one is uh, in Italian, and it's by Kenneth Grant, and it's called Gamaliel, Diario di un Vampiro, Diary of a Vampire. Kenneth Grant is a very, very interesting writer. He's a magus. And this is published by Roberto Migliuzzi in Livorno, Italy. And, oh, Kenneth Grant died in 2011. Okay. And the, tra uh, the, the uh, translation of this book was done by Irene Zanier, Zanier and Roberto Migliuzzi. And... It was reprinted with permission. And it's beautifully printed. Everything that Roberto does is printed on nice paper, beautiful typesetting in Tuscany, Italy. And if you want this book, if you're into Meguses and, you know, magic and Aleister Crowley and all that stuff, and you read Italian, contact me and I will put you in touch with Roberto. No problem. I've got some of his art on my walls. I have quite a bit of his art here, which I'm authorized to sell and just give him a cut. It's very interesting stuff. This is just postcards from the Edge, uh, the Carrie Fisher book, and I found it secondhand years ago, and I'm rereading it. I'm almost done with it. It's very, very funny. I really like it. I didn't see the movie. All right, now, in the, this is called the Fuzak. And it stands for France USA Contacts, and apparently it's available online now. You used to be able to get the print copies by subscription elsewhere outside of France, which was kind of expensive, and you can get it in and around Paris and um, some other cities. Uh, basically, the people who advertise in this um, uh, get free copies that they can place around their place of business. Now, I do have a bone to pick with these people because um, I've I've complained to them about some of their advertisers. One of them who ripped me off very badly <clears throat> for close to twenty thousand euros in two thousand and ten, for example, and they never seem to care or follow up. And when I have contact with other shady people who pay the expensive money for advertising here, they really don't seem to care. So, you know, be careful about this. Also, the real estate listed here is extremely pricey. I mean, if you want to pay one to 2,000 euros for a tiny studio in Paris, go right ahead and look for what's advertised in here. But if you want something for less, contact me and hire me because I know how to sneak onto college campuses and find out about um, rooms offered to students, and you don't necessarily have to be a student to get one. And, um, you know, this is just, these ads cost a lot, so, you know, whatever is sold here is probably going to be pretty expensive. I have gotten a few jobs from this magazine over the last 20 years. There's book reviews in this. 
Now, what I wanted to share with you, and it's a little bit dark in here, I'm sorry, but you know, my eyes are hurting and I'm getting old. Now, this is about some stuff that you should never do in France. Um, do not order coffee with your lunch or dinner. That is not an option. This is written by Sherry Leslie Sigal. It will cause an international incident. On, order it only with or as dessert. Okay, that's actually very true. Um, and uh, your mother may have told you in the United States, for example, uh, keep your other hand in your lap while you're eating and don't put your extra hand on the table. But um, in France, the mothers used to fear that you were uh, pl playing with yourself. So you have to keep both hands on the table here in France. And that's true. Uh, if you're an adult, do not order milk with any meal. And even ordering it for your kid seems a bit farfelu, eccentric. Yeah, definitely. Do not ask for ice water. Ask for water, un carafe d'eau, s'il vous plaît, but leave the ice for keeping the fish fresh. Do not ask for ice here in France. Don't do it. Trust me on this. Don't pick at the basket of bread until the meal comes. I know the meal comes more slowly than you'd like, but don't pick at the bread. It's mal vu. Unless they're vegetarians themselves, or at least one of them is, don't tell your host or hostess that you're one. Accept what they serve you. Move the meat around the plate with your fork as if preparing to eat it. Eat whatever non-meat fare might accompany it. And be a brilliant conversationalist so as to distract eyes from your plate to your brain. Telling most French veg non-vegetarians that you don't eat meat catapults them into a frantic tizzy laced with looming horror that their lack of expertise in your particular dietary domain will prevent the culinary experience at hand from reaching the required summits of sacred perfect, per, uh, perfection. In fact, don't come here if you don't eat pork. Don't come here if you're a vegan. If you have dietary restrictions, keep them to yourself or don't accept invitations to meals in France. I've had people come stay with me here who showed up and were like, I don't eat pork, you know. Oh, my husband just wants to kill those people, for one thing. And it's rude, and they don't understand it. Okay, you always have to bring flowers. Um, but never bring chrysanthemums, because they're the flower of death, which you take on uh, Day of the Dead, or All Saints Day, 1st or 2nd of November. Um, now, I've had some people kind of screw with me here, especially in the past year, and weeks later or months later they've sent me an apology email, and they still don't get it. They should have sent me flowers with an apology note. You know, idiots, idiots. I won't deal with people like this. They're never going to make it here in France. They just won't. It won't work out. During business meals, do not talk shop first. Do not talk, talk shop, even second or third. As excruciating as it will be, save the contract negotiation for dessert at the earliest, or, well, the cheese course, which is near the end. After you've fully exhausted chit-chat about family, vacation, sports, geography, food, current events, and how difficult it was getting to the restaurant, given the strikers blocking the boulevard. If you don't do this, you risk losing the deal. However, you have to be able to pull this off without asking indiscreet questions, the bane of all Anglo-French conversations. If you don't ask Anglo acquaintances occasional personal questions, they think you don't care. If you ask French acquaintances occasional personal questions, they think you care too much. In some circles, even a question as seemingly harmless as, how did you meet your wife, can be a shocker. Do not eat walking down the street or on public transport vehicles. Look around you. Who are the only people doing that, although this is changing? Tourists. Oh, my God. This restaurant. I've seen this restaurant. It's got a sign that says French food. And it says homemade onion soup and escargot. Believe me, the French do not eat onion soup and they do not eat snails. You know, so any place that you see that offers French food, and it's in English, 
and it's onion soup and snails. You can be sure it is a clip joint. It is a rip-off joint for tourists. This is near Place Mange. There's a very good revival theater house. Oh, it says En Rue Mange. They serve French food. Imagine that. Yeah, you know, don't go to any place here in Paris with fondue, which is called raclette. That's for tourists. Don't go any place here that serves quiche. My God, you really need me as a private guide. Or you're going to mess up here badly on your vacation or on trying to live and work here. I'm sorry to sound rude. I had a hard day. So um, I hope you like this little review. And uh, <laughs> see you around. Bye.